Hello YouTube, it's Kristen, and today I wanted to show you uh, my kit for my next trip that's coming up in a few days. And um, everything here, except of course the ink bottles, will be going with me. I am taking a trip to Oregon to see family and friends there since we moved back uh, from Oregon to Massachusetts in January of last year. We haven't been back yet, so this will be our first trip and I'm really looking forward to it. So I wanted to show you my kit, which is pretty much the same as it has been for the last several trips. And um, this is my Fude pen, which I like to have platinum carbon ink in. It's my favorite black ink for sketching with this pen. I think because it makes a really nice, really dark black line even when you're using the Fude as a thick line. Um, actually, I can show you here what I mean. A Fude pen, if you haven't seen one before, has a bent nib. And um, when you use it, you can make very thick lines like this. You can make very thin lines like this. And um, depending on how you hold the pen, you can make a wide variety of marks with it, which is just um, one of my favorite things to do when I'm sketching. And um, so the platinum carbon ink just looks really nice in a thick line like that. So that's why I chose the carbon ink for this pen. I also have these two Fudenosuke um, pens from Tombow, which I brought last time, and I used them a little bit, and it's just, they're, they are actually, I've discovered, they're a really nice pen for, um, you know, if you're just taking one pen and your sketchbook, they're really good to have because you can get a variety of lines. This one is a hard tip. And um, you can get wide lines and thin lines with it, which is kind of similar to the uh, Fude pen. So it does, it's, I, it's not as dynamic as the Fude pen, which is one reason why I love that so much, but it's a good one to have for a variety of lines, um, just to have as backup or when you don't wanna worry about um, dealing with a fountain pen. This one is soft tip, but for me it works about the same. I don't like to push too hard on these pens, so anyway, that's the kind of variety of lines you can get with these pens, and I really like them. And then I also have my white Twisby Eco. And in this pen, I usually have, I almost always have Diatramentus Document Black, which is perfect for basic writing. And even though um, Platinum Carbon and uh, the Document Inks from Diatramentus, they're both waterproof. So it, technically I could interchange them, but I've tried using Document Ink in this pen. And when you do a, a wide, thick line. I just didn't like, it didn't, it's not as black. And so that's why I prefer the carbon ink in there. But with this one, um, this is a fine nib and pretty much I can only get fine lines, but I love it for writing. This is my favorite writing fountain pen. It's the most comfortable in my hand. It's very, it's a very sturdy pen. Um, I never have hard starts. It just is a smooth writer all the time. And the other thing about it is it has this big ink capacity. So that's what I love about this pen. I just, just filled it. It was um, totally cleaned out a few weeks ago and I just filled it for this trip. So that is all ready to go. And um, I'm also bringing this, which is, this is a new case. This is a Caveco Sport pen case. So it's a, it's a shorty. 
So you can see the case itself is, is really small compared to my regular sized pens. And I have three small travel pens in here. I've been experimenting with Cavecos. I have a number of plastic, plastic Cavecos sports. And I also recently got this Caveco All Sport, which is an aluminum body pen. And I got it because I just love the color. I love that stonewash blue look. I also recently got the brass one because it just looked really cool and I wanted to try it. The, there's a big weight difference between the plastic, the aluminum and the brass. And uh, I haven't fully explored which one is the most comfortable in my hand, but I've been using this one more and more. I put, um, I put the document black ink in this pen inside a, an empty cartridge. And this has a fine nib. Let's see. This was the Twisby pen. And this is the fine nib of this Caveco. And it's even finer than the Twisby. So I have been using this occasionally for writing. I at first it didn't feel comfortable that comfortable in my hand, but now I'm getting more used to it. So I wanted to bring this and try using it more and see see what I think. So I have that one. I also have the brass, and in this one I just filled it with Diatramentus document brown. And this is also a fine nib, but I think this one seems to write with a thicker line than that, that blue one there. So uh, I'm going to give this one a try. And also one reason I wanted to try it is because this brass pen is heavier. I wanted to see how that does, because I do have some issues with I just have grip issues in general, but holding on to um, something that isn't weighted properly, a fountain pen that's not weighted properly can be draining and may lead you to not be able to write for very long, which is one reason, that's another reason why the Twisby works for me, because when I post it like this, it's just perfect. It's perfectly balanced in my hand and I don't get any fatigue. I can write for a really long time with that. So the other little pen here, this is a Traveler's Company brass fountain pen, which I also wanted to try because, well, I just wanted to try the brass, I guess. You see how shiny this one is? It's still pretty shiny. This one has already started to patina quite a bit. In fact, it's got little spots that I don't, I don't even have any idea how those got there. But I think when I got this, it was pretty, pretty shiny. And it's definitely already started to patina. So um, with this one, what I have in here is actually the Traveler's Company um, cartridge that the pen came with, which is not a waterproof ink. Now, why am I bringing that? I was actually thinking that I might replace the ink in there with something waterproof. But then I was just doodling around and I did this little sketch. And when I put water on it, I got this these fabulous pink and purple colors. And I just, um, I always have fun playing with a water, a, a water, a non-waterproof ink um, for sketching. I just, sometimes it's just a fun thing to do. And um, I love the colors in this one, so that's why I'm bringing this one. And at some point, I might replace it with a waterproof ink, but for now, I'm just going to keep that in there. And then I'll have, you know, a nice variety of pens to play around with. All right, so that's the inks and the pens. I also have my regular Pentel water brush, and I have my... Um, my art tool kit palette, which has all the same colors that I've been I've been using for a little while now. Same, this is all the same that you saw in the last video at least. 
and I did actually need to fill up today. I filled the Quinn Gold, the Moon Glow, and this Amazonite Genuine. Let's see, this is the Quinn Gold, Amazonite Genuine, and the Moon Glow. And I realized I've been really using them a lot. I enjoy, I guess I really enjoy using them on their own and in mixes. So anyway, they had, they had little holes in the middle, so I filled those up. So this is all ready to go. And it all fits in this little handmade uh, pouch that I talked about previously. And um, somebody asked me about the pattern. And there, the, there is no pattern for this exact one because I kind of did a mashup of sizes and measurements. But on the previous video about this, which I'll link in the description, I did uh, put some links in that description for the tutorials that I use to help me make it. There are YouTube tutorials, so you can look it up there and see if there's anything that helps you make your own. Um, then I remembered, thankfully, I just remembered today that I had this little sketchbook that I made. It's a postcard sketchbook that has watercolor paper, and these postcards are um, by an artist in Central Oregon. Her name is Kathy Degendorfer, and she's one of my favorite artists, and she's done postcards for the quilt show and artwork, other artwork for the quilt show, and she does all kinds of different things, but a lot of her artwork is Central Oregon based, so I remembered I had that, and I'm going to bring that on my trip because uh, we will be in sisters. Um, oh, and the other thing I just wanted to show, this is actually what I do at the, when I am getting ready for a trip. I always put one of these little hand-drawn address spots on the back page of my book. And I didn't fill it in because I wanted to show you. I've been covering them up in uh, most of my videos because I don't want my personal information out there. But um, anyway, it's just a fun little thing to do. The other thing that I also like to do is often I'll draw my palette. I haven't done that yet, but I may add that. I usually do it at the back, but, you know, maybe this time I'll do it near the front of the book. So we'll see about that. So that's that whole kit. So this is my um, my standard sized journal that I am bringing, which has my I'll show you. It has my weekly travel uh, weekly vertical planner, but it's basically just a diary. I write down every day what we did, and I like I don't I don't like to not travel with this because. I guess I don't like to back date and you know try to figure out what we did and put it all in there. I like to do it on the day. So I'm gonna bring that. This also has my sticker, one of my little sticker um, packs that the way I put this in here, I prefer a folio to a stringed travel cover, travel journal cover like, this is a traveler's notebook. This is the kind that has the strings in the middle. And I really have discovered that that's not my favorite style. I prefer a folio, which means that it has the pocket on the front and the back that you can tuck your cover into. And the way I do it is I put my, my little sticker thing in first. So that goes into both sides. Then I'll put one insert on the front like that and the other insert tucked into the back like that and this is kind of like the perfect sort of um, journal for me and the way this one is made I don't have any anything sticking out the side which is nice also this has a pocket on the front so if I you know, get some kind of travel information or something that I want to have there, I can do that. But of course I can also tuck things in here and in here. And then 
They also have these card slot pockets, which I don't actually typically use, but they're there, so I could use them. Um, so let's see, what else do I want to talk about? I put in here some of the stickers that I might want to have with me. And they're kind of a mix this time of travel themed ones and nature ones because the area of Oregon that we're going to is, uh, you know, nature is a big thing there. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's all around the mountains, the trees, the forest. Um, we'll be driving over the Santium Pass, so, you know, we'll, we'll get to see all that and, um, so anyway, a lot of these stickers reminded me of the forests of Central Oregon. And so I, I may end up sticking some of those in, but I did pre-decorate. So I wanted to talk about this journal because it's a little bit, this is different from my previous travel. And when I went to New York and came back and talked about that travel journal, I mentioned that I wanted to do something different for this trip. I wanted to have a travel journal that was all mixed media paper so that I could do a sketch and watercolor anywhere in here that I want to do one. And so let me tell you what happened or how this, this little journal came to be. So this cover was actually stuck to, is a, it's a traveler's company cover that came with an insert that was, um, it's the lightweight, it's a super, I think they call it the super lightweight paper, which is Tomoe River, but it's a very, it's the lightest weight version of Tomoe River paper you can get. It's very thin, it has a lot of pages because they're so thin you can put more in, a, in an insert. And when I first got it, I decorated this cover intending to take it to Oregon. And then um, I started I started doing this. I started putting in little um, bits of happy mail and like these were stickers that I bought. I just started filling it up with stuff. And after a while, I realized that that super lightweight journal there were so many pages in there that it was just going to get overstuffed. So this is actually only half of those pages. And look at how thick that is. It's, it's, that's too thick for me. I prefer a thin journal. Um, so I took it apart and I uh, put all the pages that I had started to fill up. I re, we re, re um, sewed them with, with this scrap of paper cover and then just save this for happy mail. So this is all happy mail stuff. There's no, there's no um, like family photographs or regular journaling. The journaling that's in here is basically about the stuff that's in here. So anyway, that's how I ended up using the first half of that journal. And I put this cover on the other half of the pages thinking again that that's what I would bring on my Central Oregon trip. But then I decided that I wanted to have mixed media paper inside. So I took the cover off those super lightweight papers, set them aside and put them together again with just with mixed media paper. So that's what we have here. There are 10 sheets, which means overall there's 40 pages of this. Uh, mixed media paper and like I said I had already decorated with some stickers I actually have some other Oregon type stickers on the back um, place things in the front um, this is these were I don't I think I did these stickers um, when I was actually doing the do, using it for this kind of stuff but I thought this one was kind of funny. Do not bend, thank you. But the town that we're going to is called Bend. So I had I just had to leave that in there. So um, these, this will be my journal. And 
I'm pretty sure that will be plenty of pages, but I do also have that little watercolor, postcard watercolor journal in my other kit. So I will have plenty of space, but this is the kind of thing that I generally write in in the evenings. And whereas this, this comes with me out where I'm going. And obviously because this is now, this is a standard size insert, it doesn't fit in my little pouch. So I was actually getting ready to make a B6 Slim insert that I could put in here. And then I remembered that I already had this made. So that's how that ended up in there. And this has, this has quite a few pages. So it's quite possible I won't be able to fill it up on this trip, but see what I end up doing. Um, I think that's everything that I wanted to say, but when I get back, I will finish up my journal, add photographs, and then do a video showing you what exactly I did. So I think that's all for now. Have a good week. Bye-bye.